So you're alongside here. You're definitely there. guys, Jimmy here, and welcome back to another video. It is post Buckmore 24, and I'm injured. I've done myself an unkindness. <laughs> First of all, I managed to hurt my gamer arm going over a curb too hard. Here's a picture of me in a sling looking sorry for myself. Don't worry though, it's not actually as bad as it first appeared. And secondly, you might notice I've got this little sort of mark on my nose here. That's a funny one, uh, because I was wearing a cam box on my stint, or trying to anyway. A cam box is this little sort of mini slivered camera thing which sort of sticks to the top of your, I don't know what they call it, eye hole bit. And it came loose during my stint, meaning that as I was going around, I had a cam box in my face doing this over every bump. And it eventually actually <laughs> caused me to bleed in the end. Ah. <laughs> uh... Basically, it didn't go great. But we're not here to talk about that. We're here to talk about the subject of this video, which is once again the glorious subreddit Sim Racing Stewards. You guys seem to very much enjoy the last video. I think it has like half a million views in it or something stupid like that. So I thought I'd return to it, have a look at some more of your, frankly, usually quite hilarious incidents, and also save myself from driving a little bit because my arm is achy. I'm also joined this time by the Council of Cuties. So I think having one judge, jury, executioner in myself is you know, not quite how the sim racing legal system should work. Oh. Just before we get into the video though, a small merch plug from yours truly. As you probably know, we've set up a new motorsport racing brand called Team 87 with the goal, uh, TLDR basically getting more of you guys at home into motorsport and we've just dropped our first piece of merch which you can find over on the website available for pre-order at the moment i don't have it on me right now because well it's dirty so feel free to go check it out pick up one if you're interested if not then on with the video so here we are back now so here we are back in the sim racing stewards subreddit and just before i get into looking at these incidents uh, if you guys want to go and give your own opinion feel free to go and do that but be polite we are guests in the sim racing stewards community so uh please be courteous and wipe your feet on the way in right first things first a clip here from just me now saying was my overtake illegal slash aggressive to receive a side hit. Let's check it out, my guy. So we are on board in a bimmer with the best quality video I've ever seen in my goddamn life. There are some pixels somewhere on the screen. Coming up towards the source at Spa. We're going to chuck it up inside, I assume. We're there. Nice moves done. Overextended a little bit there. Ah, okay. I'm going to try watch that again because I'm effectively watching you know, porn from the 90s here. There's so little fucking detail. So we're going in. We're going into the source now. We outbreak ourselves, actually lock up a bit here, which is why we go straight. Now, if I'm the Ferrari here, I'm thinking, oh, what, a, what, a, what an idiot. But I'm not thinking about retaliating. Um, you should be thinking if you're the Ferrari, right? I'm going to duck back in now and take my place back. So coming out of the source. Now, I've noticed the 74 is on a bit of a tighter line than they usually would be in the Ferrari here. It sounds like, to me, that he actually spins up his rear wheels trying to get onto the throttle. Now, of course, if you've got a bit of a tighter angle out the corner, it's going to be more load on the outside tyre. You're asking more of the tyre if we're just jamming onto the throttle. And this one gives up. He has a little bit of a wiggle, then falls out of the corner a bit and into our guy in the BMW. So whilst this incident is on the Ferrari, it's not malicious. And I'd probably go as far and say it's just a bit of a racing incident. It's unfortunate. It's annoying. Uh, but I don't think it was intentional. But if you are going to dive bomb someone at the corner, make sure you stop. <laughs> That's my advice for the bimmer here. Next up is Pascal saying, I am the BMW driver in front. A lot of BMW drivers in these uh, crashes already. I don't think a theme. Fast guy who was caught in the backfield for whatever reason. That's number 20. Says I brake checked him. Have a look. 20 years, the fast guy. Says he gets brake checked. Uh, no. That is breathing heavy. I, I, I often I often sit late at night breathing heavily to sim racing. No, I don't think you brake checked him. I think if I'm looking at that, look at that again. I think you did brake a little bit early for the corner, but the sort of standard rule that a lot of series go with is that it is up to the passing car to make the move safely. Um, you're braking... You know what? No, you're braking... 
maybe a tiny bit early, but you are also going defensive to the inside there. If I'm looking at this slowly, like you break and he moves at the same time. So I can see why he would think, hey, I'm being break checked here, but no, I would say this is 100% on the number 20 car behind you. Just misjudge that completely. Bad. Number 20, guilty. The Council of Cuties have decided it. This is from Hudley saying, Did I get what I deserved for going for this move in Gran Turismo? Let's have a look. Absolutely great imagery here. Going around the outside. Get out of my way! Uh, <laughs> I mean, if I'm honest, mate, it was a great move. The Impreza didn't see it coming. He then got a little bit angry that he just got fucking done dirty like that. And then it looks like he came over and swiped you. So you did absolutely nothing wrong. But this is a troubling thing that I'm seeing in Gran Turismo 7 a lot nowadays. Is people running other people into walls like this or pit lane entrances and stuff like that. And just not getting penalised for it. Like it is like a legit way to to defeat someone in the race. Just send them into the fucking pit entry wall to the wall here. I really hope the polyphony find a way to really accurately clamp down on this because this is not the first crash of this sort I have seen in GT7 recently. Uh, but no mate you're completely innocent. That guy was shit and a bad loser. So Matt Rubin says I'm in the red car here. Who's at fault? I feel like Yellow attempted to dive bomb locked up and just went into me causing a pile up but open to see other views. We're on board with my boy the yellow car. Red car in front. Up the inside. Hello there. It's quite intense after that. You know what? Like, let's have one more look again. Does he lock up? I'm looking at the wheels to see if they stop at all. Might have been a rear lock. There's the lock. Yeah, front left locks here, and you go straight into him. Um, yeah, it's his fault. He he dives into the corner a bit too hard. Can't get slowed down, and goes into the side of you. Um, however. It's, I don't think it's on purpose. I don't think he goes, right, I'm going to lock up and hit him on purpose. I think he just made a mistake going for a dive. So, yes, it is 100% on the guy in the yellow there. But I wouldn't say it's malicious. If anything, actually, I'm more annoyed that you've put a Ferrari um, livery on a Formula V. That's, you get more guilty for that <laughs> than this guy does for, <laughs> for wrecking you. <laughs> right, okay. F1 2021. These clips are my favourite because everyone is fucking convinced that their Max has happened. And no one is. Um... So this is from Corbin. It says, though I gave enough space during the race, I'm not exactly sure looking at the replay. I am the Aston Martin, so I guess it's an instant here. We have a car behind us. Look in the mirror. There's a car there on the right-hand side. And at the moment, as I see this car dart out from the mirror, there is a gap on the right here. He's still there. He's still there. More, more than enough still there. Um, okay, that's an interesting one. I mean, you braked quite early for this corner. But... The guy did kind of just sweep across like you weren't there. He just, he came across and pretended you weren't there. Like he's going for the apex of the corner at this point. He even thinks that he's gone all the way around the outside and made it. Or he just doesn't see you. So you turn in a little bit later than he does. But that's because your line is shallower than his is. So I'm actually going to say this is on the Alfa Romeo, this contact. He, this is a, he spins you around here. Just poor perception really from the alpha driver i mean i think you could have done a bit more I, I think if i'm being really critical you left a little bit too much space and sort of almost encouraged that move to happen um you say you gave space which is good but you gave him like an extra car length in that situation if you're defending you can squeeze as much as you like as long as you don't impede him or you know make him change his line to avoid contact if you're if he's right on the outside and you're here that's completely legal and he has no choice but to wait for you to do something to turn in or try and put it around the outside. So I say it's on the alpha, but you know, food for thought there with maybe how you can handle that differently in the future. Because while sometimes you get involved in incidents that aren't your fault, sometimes there, there's more you can do to make sure the incident just doesn't happen full stop, if that makes sense. Yeah. This one is called, um, am, I, am I at fault? I am the 6J and it looks like a Monza T1, which is just scrumptious. Originally thought I was at fault, but looking back, he should have pulled out, right? So we are going into the second chicane. Dimmer on the inside. Uh, you know, this is interesting because this is quite similar to a, a crash we saw earlier on today where I said it was sort of the Audi's fault. But you actually ended up giving him the room on the inside. And at this point, though he goes for the dive, he is there. And you would have known he is there. The crash we saw earlier happened a bit further back, so we didn't quite get to this point in the corner. But... The, the treble nine, you know, you would have known he's there at that point. Was it a bit of a lunge? Yes. 
Oh god, and the resulting part. Oh, you love to see the pile up afterwards. You love to see it. Let's, let's just watch it again from the Jack's point of view. Yeah, I mean, it looks like to me he was sort of hoping that you just go side by side through the corner. He looks like he looks like he set himself up for that because he's not really on the front wheel. He's just sort of like rolling through the corner. A little bit of gas there, but it does seem to me that like with that angle though he probably would have driven out the corner anyway i think it's a racing incident i think you were both a little bit clumsy there to be honest um so i'm not going to put that on the jag no i'm going to say yeah it's a 50 50 that one this one's still close save and didn't pick up any damage but should he have been penalized for not moving that's interesting we're in project cars we're in an indie car that project car on the steel you'd love to see it Oh man, what, what, I, what I'm seeing first of all is that there are no yellow flags anywhere. I'm not sure if that's a game setting or what, but if there's a car literally stopped here, there should be a yellow flag. Now he, he's only freshly spun, he's just gone in there, he's just in front of you and spun. So at this point, the best thing he could have done is just escape back to the pit lane or stay where he is, because that's the most predictable thing you can do when you spin, is stay stationary. What he then proceeded to do was just heroic because we were gonna we were gonna avoid him here. We were gonna slow down. We we're gonna avoid him. He goes, "Oh shit! I'll get out of the way," and then just accelerates into us, and both he just closes the gap and imprisons us both in that barrier. So for part one, where he spun, that's not his, that that's not something you can protest. People spin all the time. Staying where he is in the circuit is a good idea because you're predictable. Although it's scary in real life, trust me. <laughs> but the secondary move, where he then drove into the barrier and basically cut you off, is definitely a big fat guilty. So that is a whack on the desk for me. Don't be unpredictable. Stop it. Fuck. <laughs> my brother keeps calling me an idiot for my overtakes. What do you guys think? Was it a fair overtake? We're on board with Max Verstappen, which always goes well. This is an AI race here. Let's have a look. Breaking down into the chicane. A little bit a little bit ropey through there, but you can tell we're on a gamepad, so I'm not gonna blame him for that. Where are you going, mate? There goes Bartas on the way through. I mean I guess it's a fair move if I look at it again. It's definitely against AI because you see how much they slow down for the corner here. I mean the gap's there. Yeah, it's it's fine. I mean, without the contact, it would have been perfect. A little bit risky, but yeah, fine. I don't see a problem with that. But I will say that was very much of a Stappen move, where it's either, you know, it's a, there's a lot of risk involved. If it comes off, you're a hero. If it doesn't, then you're out of the race. So just be careful in the future of moves like that. Oh, trucking. Oh, I love, I haven't done the oval ones yet. I don't know as much about oval as I do about road. So I might not be quite as informed here. But this is from Mr. Pint. He says, who's at fault? Black car says he was still within the track limits. So we're following the black car now. We have gone below. We're still above the apron. That's fine. We're now below the apron, which is considered usually not fine. He's going to have a wobble on the outside. Yep. Okay. So this is on. Yeah, it's on the 13. So it's sort of one, one rule that I'm familiar with in oval racing which is you don't go below the apron um for one reason one you're not allowed to it's not part of the circuit and two because it's going to make the car unstable because when you're on the banking it's all sort of uh you know it's, it's a progression as soon as you hit the uh the apron the road does that and so your car starts to move around a lot um you not you're not able to keep the car as straight as you were before so here what happens here is he just, you see he's having the moments down there, he's trying to keep the car under control and sort of penduluming a little bit, comes back and eventually tags someone and causes this big wreck. So in that case, that would be a, um, that's his fault. And in some cases that's protestable in iRacing as well. So you've got to be careful doing stuff like that. It's, um, it's not great, but uh, let's look at the crash. <laughs> It's a, it's a good crash. More iRacing, this time at Road America in a Ferrari. We're on board with Ben K. Ben K, what have you got for us, mate, as we come now down towards Canada Corner? It's going to be a dive bomb up right the inside. Yep, corner's ours. We're on the inside here. Very nice. Porsche's still there, though. He's still, he's still there. He's still going to be there. <sighs> Clumsy. Thumbsy AF. So at this point, so this is going into the corner. He has maybe a tip of a splitter. 
alongside. If you're the Porsche in this in this scenario, just get out of it for crying out loud. Like there's no way you're gonna make this. The Ferrari's had yet, it's done you dirty down the corner. That's your own fault. I mean this is net code, because the it, that's that's where the contact happens. You know, we still have that much of the car left. But he was gonna hit you anyway, regardless of net code. So that's one million percent on the Porsche. I know you were maybe still getting the still there, but you can see where he is on the circuit. Sometimes you've got to just be clever and survive the corner and think, oh, wait a minute, the next corner after this is a massive straight. I can just draft him by again. But instead, you end both your races right here with a silly move, especially on lap one. It's, it's not very clever. So, yeah, Porsche, mate, use your head. I know it's difficult. I can use it. One more F1 clip just to cleanse my palette before we leave off today, I think. So... We are on board as a Red Bull, running some wacky-ass FOV from the T-Cam. We've got a Ferrari in front. Let's take a look. They've got a nine-second penalty right now. So the first thing I'm going to say is that if we're the Red Bull here, is that I already know that if I'm anywhere close to this Ferrari at the end of the race, I've won this race because he's got a nine-second time penalty. You don't need to overtake him. But I bet you're going to try anyway. All right, Imola. Leclerc hasn't spun on the chicane. You've got to be inside of the first Rivazza. He comes across. A little bit of contact. You're still both there, though. You're definitely on the inside. Ass! I don't know, mate. It's a weird one. Like, I mean, you're there. He knows you're there at this point because you've put the car alongside. So he's got to give you some room. He gives you, I'd say, the bare minimum room on the inside. You run into him, which... Can happen you're both alongside you're still bashing each other another bit of contact there this is not one it just feel I, I don't feel like he was coming across i feel like just the, the rubbing of the tires made him move to the, to the left a little bit and put you both into this little wall here you're very lucky not to get away with that as well so really if anything it just seemed unnecessary to do that but i'd say that was just racing instant that's just hard racing with a little bit of contact in there we try and avoid contact especially in f1 cars of course but um yeah the main thing is use your head use your head my guy you would have won that race in fact you did win that race without having to do any of that bullshit that was unnecessary risk you took there so use your brain so yeah another session of sim racing stewards in the books hope you guys enjoyed that and found it somewhat informative um, what I really enjoyed about the last video is you guys taking to the comments and giving me your opinions on, I guess, my own judgments. You know, I'm not, I'm definitely not the, uh, you know, the, the final say in all these things. I'm just another sim racing enthusiast who's just been doing it for a while. So not everything I say is going to be gospel. In fact, I really hope you never take it that way. But uh, if you have any comments on any of the stuff you've seen today or anything that I've said, then feel free to leave them down below. In the Comment. And if you enjoyed the video or found it informative, as I mentioned earlier, then please feel free to tap that like button and to subscribe as well. It is much appreciated. A massive thank you to my channel patrons and sponsors. Thank you so much for helping this channel survive and for helping me go racing in the real world. Take care. Have an awesome day. See you all next time. Stop hitting each other.